awesome weekend, and we've been fighting hard all year. And, you know, Bobby's really coming into his own, starting at Road America, and then he carried that over to Mid-Ohio and Laguna, and he broke through today and, and you know, squeaked out his first win. And uh, so now, now he knows that he can do it. He's very confident, and he's, he's just building every day and every time he gets on the bike. And, you know, in the sport bike class, you got 10 guys that can win the thing, and now Bobby knows he's one of those guys. It was an awesome race, you know. Uh, the team's been working really hard all weekend. And, uh, we, you know, we paid it off and uh, had to redeem myself a little bit from Laguna Seca, you know. Unfortunately, I threw it down at Laguna Seca um, in front of my home crowd. But, uh, you know, I, I got it done this weekend and uh, hopefully we just do it again tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a lot of close racing and, uh, you know, all the way starting in third row, I just got to try hard. Photo finish right there at the line and actually when we were waiting to find out up there at the podium, it took quite some time for the results to get through. <laughs> We don't know yet, Bobby. We don't know. We don't know. It's definitely first. One of the two. That's my boy! Good job, man. Good job. He just came out. There is definitely some excitement going on. In Victory Circle, they have given the nod to Bobby Paul. And I believe it was just a, a hair there that you won by. What were you feeling like in that time, the anticipation of the win? Uh, I was so stoked when they said I won. You know, I, honestly, I didn't know who won. It was so close. It was me and Cardenas. But, uh, you know, I was just excited. And, uh, you know, thank God. And uh, hopefully just get a photo finish again tomorrow. Well, you did well at Mid-Ohio. And obviously, you got what you were looking for here this weekend at VIR. Uh, what's next for New Jersey? Uh, double win, <laughs> double win, what everybody wants. And, uh, you know, uh, in the middle of the season, I started building up my momentum. And, uh, you know, I got a, a lot of momentum behind me right now. And uh, I have the confidence to be up there every weekend. <laughs> We've been testing a lot of equipment with Beck. And he's largely responsible for the improvements that are have helped Bobby get to where he's at. He's been a workhorse for us, and now it's um, his turn. And so I wouldn't be surprised if you see old Michael up there next to Bobby for too long. never felt this feeling before. I have the confidence and I think Michael Beck is definitely back now. I'm working with James Compton and he's, he's, he's awesome. It gives me the confidence in myself, the equipment, just everything, you know. My package is good. These are Ducatis, which of course have two cylinders instead of four. We've always seen you working on four-cylinder machines before. Are there any dynamics to that that are different or are there just uh, pistons going up and down and wheels going around? Yeah, no, all motorcycles are the same. There's no, <laughs> yeah, they're drastically different. Um, when I first came in, I was completely lost. I've never worked on a, on a Ducati before, and just the arrangement of uh, the engine and where the weight is in the chassis, um, the way they transfer weight, the dynamics are completely different than an inline four. So spring rates and wheel rates and damping characteristics and everything that I've used in the past I had to throw out the window and kind of start with a fresh sheet of paper and come up with some theories and uh, relied greatly on rider feedback and to get an idea of what direction we needed to head. Um, but surprisingly the development process went pretty quickly uh, in a matter of two or three weekends we, we were able to get Bobby up on the podium at Mid-Ohio and, um, and make quite a bit of progress. And I think the guys now are they're pretty happy with the way the motorcycle feels. Um, at, at first, they were kind of riding around some issues, and, and the general consensus was, well, this is just a Ducati. That's the way you have to ride it, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I'm, uh, uh, I, didn't, I wasn't an easy sell on that. I, I, I disagree. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we tried some things that are maybe a little outside the box, had some, uh, some prototype parts built and, move, you know, trying to get the weight where we want it. And, uh, like, like what, offsets or uh, triple clamps? Well, I, 
I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you, Dave. It's uh, <laughs> it's top secret stuff. Um, yeah, actually, I really can't tell you. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I could, but, but. I'm not gonna. Um, yeah, it's not. I mean, it's all legal stuff, but I don't want to give my yeah, competitors yeah. any advantage by uh, posting this on a on a uh, YouTube <laughs> video. So, but yeah, we we're doing. A, approaching things a little bit differently than I think some of the other guys that have dealt with the Ducati and its uh, unique characteristics have in the past. The thing obviously has some some strong points to it. You know, it makes great power and it's very smooth power delivery. Um, but the chassis is, uh, and the chassis is good. It's just there's a challenge with the, where the weight is at in the chassis. Uh, uh, it, the characteristics are the weight just doesn't transfer as well as or I shouldn't even say that it's not that it doesn't well better or worse than anything else it's just totally different it's not transferring weight like an inline four and that's what most of the things on the planet are right then that's my been my background has always been in line fours and so it's been I mean if you take the body work off the bike and just do a kind of a 2d snapshot of the thing and look at it it's like well that looks kind of like a, a side profile of an inline four mounted backwards with the transmission sticking forward towards the rear axle and you know see so you have a bulkier weight right in front of the swing arm pivot and there's no weight behind the steering head where a lot of weight is on an inline four so they just don't transfer well and without a little help so i mean once you start moving some weight around and, and playing with spring rate and damping characteristics, you can get them moving. But that also brings up a whole nother set of problems. There's, you know, because they don't transfer well, we have to help them transfer. And then we came to this track this weekend with, uh, it produces some pretty significant G, G forces in some of the corners. And that regardless of weight transfer, you're still going through a corner with a lot of G-force and the bike weighs the same as everything else. But we've compensated in spring rate and damping characteristics to help it transfer by making it a little softer. Yeah. And then you encounter corners with a lot of G-force and the things just bottom out. So we spent a lot of time this weekend finding fine-tuning to where we had support in the part of the stroke that we needed it to get through those corners but also keep them compliant and soft enough to transfer weight in the typical corners that we find at most tracks so it, it was a little bit of a struggle and we rolled the dice right before the race we uh beck and bobby we both they both got the exact same change and i was pretty confident in it but it you know <laughs> I've been confident in a lot of things that didn't work, so. <laughs> yeah, but we rolled the dice a little bit, and it, it paid off. Both the guys were pretty happy with the with the feel of the bike yesterday. Grip was really good throughout the entire race, and and they still did everything they want them to do: turn well, finish the corner well, you know, all that. So we're making headway. It'll be uh, interesting to see how we finish up. We seem to have a little a little bit of momentum now, and uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to finishing out the season strong and starting the development process and have some time we you know that's been our biggest downfall to this point is we just have we started the real a serious development process in the middle of a season when we have no time to develop and test and do all that that the off season is when you do that stuff when you start racing and traveling all over the country your development process comes to you know not a standstill, but it slows down drastically. So, In celebration of Bobby Fong's first AMA victory, we've got these two ball caps signed by Bobby Fong himself the day he won. You can win one of these ball caps by answering the following question. What's next for New Jersey? And emailing your answer to onthethrottletv at gmail.com.